On January 30, 1935, the Arthur D. Story, an Essex-built fishing schooner consigned to the Gorton Pugh and Davis Brothers Fisheries, was docked at Ben Pine's Atlantic Supply Wharf on the Gloucester waterfront. Her captain was William Nickerson, the vice president of the Gloucester Master Mariners Association. Named for Essex's most renowned shipbuilder, the Arthur D. Story was one of the fleet of schooners supervised by Ben Pine, who had used this particular boat to compete in the schooner races of 1929. That wintry morning, the crew left for Newfoundland, where they would take on 1,120 barrels of salt and frozen herring, before heading home on March 1st. It turned out to be their last voyage, as the boat vanished without a trace after being engulfed in a horrific storm. My friend and business partner, Joseph M. Cody, worked for Ben Pine as a clerk in his outfitting store, and Cody was to go on this vessel. At the last minute, or within a few days of the departure, Miss Adams announced to Joe Cody, you're not going on the story because we need you back in the shop. Uh, ben Pine is sick. I need you to work here. So Cody, disappointed as he was, reluctantly accepted the, the, the command from Miss Adams, who uh, was the boss, uh, to stay ashore. And of course, well, the Arthur D. story all hands were lost on that vessel. 1935 would turn out to be one of the 20th century's worst years for hurricanes, a fact that would later overshadow the importance of the intense storm the Arthur D. Story encountered in icy waters on March 3rd. She had such a load, they even put heron down on the forecastle, which is the forward part of the cruise quarters. They even carried cargo in the forecastle. So when she went out, she was down by the head, uh, encountered heavy weather, and she kept right on going, just like a submarine. Days after Captain Nickerson's boat vanished, the halibut schooner American, captained by Simon Terrio, limped into Gloucester after having survived 44 hours in the grips of the same storm. Simon called it the worst he had ever seen. After seeing the extensive damage to the American, the Arthur D. Story and its crew were given up for lost. Its crew, all Gloucester residents, contained two St. John's parishioners. The oldest was William Enos Wolfe, the 66-year-old cook. The youngest was Ralph Fiander, the 21-year-old engineer. At the 1030 service on Sunday, April 13th, the Reverend Joseph Cooper led the parish in prayer for William and Ralph. As with so many of Gloucester's fishing families, the Fianders of 16 Oak Street were only too familiar with suffering. The year Ralph was born, his father Hubert died when the schooner Rita Cluett was lost off Newfoundland. His uncle Ralph was killed when the oil tanker Gulfland exploded at Port Arthur, Texas in 1928. And his stepfather, Thomas Best, would later die when the trawler Inca sunk after colliding with a freighter. In a pew with his mother and stepfather that day was Ralph's teenage brother, Hubert Jr., a member of the St. John's Choir. In a few years, Hubert would become an outstanding and popular student at Gloucester High School, a commanding officer of his ROTC detachment and vice president of his senior class in 1938. He would go on to graduate at the head of his class at West Point enlist in the Signal Corps before volunteering for the paratroops. He would become a courageous leader, effectively commanding his men on battlefields in Italy and France, where in 1944, Hubert Jr. would pay the ultimate sacrifice. He is buried in Arlington National Cemetery. On the website of the West Point Association of Graduates is this testimonial. The essence of the man was a simple and natural devotion to the welfare of others, a keystone of his character which was evidenced so quietly as to be unrecognized by all but his intimates. The fact that his devotion extended to giving his life was a natural expression of his selflessness, and in his mind would merit no commendatory letters or appropriate verse. Mm -hmm.